XPS has two main advantages over other similar techniques. The first one is the surface sensitivity. XPS only detects elements in a very very thin region. This is the region where XPS detects elements. The second advantage is it differentiates in chemical environment. XPS detects that how carbon bonded with carbon, how carbon bonded with oxygen, how carbon make double bond with oxygen. So XPS also reveal about the chemical environment of the element. The elemental identification can be achieved by running a survey spectra. This is a survey spectra. From here we identify the elements exist. The chemical environment can be achieved by running a high resolution XPS spectra. This is the survey spectra for chlorine here and then we focus the most important peak and we run high resolution XPS spectra. Now this peak can be converted to these two peaks. So these two different peaks then talk about the chemical environment. There are two main advantages of XPS or other similar techniques. The first one is surface sensitivity. XPS only detects elements in this thin region. Let's see from the diagram. When X-ray shine on the samples, photoelectrons are generated. So this is basically very thick region here. Here photoelectron generated, but because of inelastic collisions, this electron completely lost its energy and it's finished here. Now let's compare this a second region just below 10 nanometer. Here photoelectrons make few inelastic collisions and hardly reach to the XPS detector, but it only contribute to the background of the XPS peak here, not contribute to the photoelectron peaks or OJ peaks. Now let's come to this region, very thin region, surface. It is almost 10 nanometer. Here photoelectron generates and these photoelectrons making elastic collisions. And we know in elastic collisions, these photoelectrons do not lose energy and it's reach to the detector. So it forms the photoelectron peaks as well as the OJ peaks. So this is extremely surface sensitive techniques. So you might ask me that what are other techniques? The other techniques is basically UPS, similar techniques. This is called ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy. This is extremely surface sensitive technique. This means that it only detects elements in two nanometer thickness. So it is very hard to find elements uh, in this small uh, thickness. So this is why XPS is powerful because XPS can go to 10 millimeter uh, thickness at least. The second technique which is used for elemental analysis is basically the EDX. It is uh, coupled with a scanning electron microscopy and because of this we also identify elements qualitatively and quantitatively. The second advantage of XPS or other characterization techniques is it distinguish in chemical environment. This is the most important. Look here. This carbon may bond with carbon, so it may have some binding energy here. And this carbon may bond with oxygen. So XPS can detect this environment. It has also some binding energy here. Now, this carbon make double bond with oxygen and we can increase the oxygen here. So, XPS can detect this situations from where? From binding energy. We get increased binding energy here in the XPS spectrum and then we realize that there is more electronegative elements attached with the carbons. So, this is the most important advantage of XPS work other characterization techniques. The elemental identification from XPS can be achieved from survey spectra. This is basically the survey spectra. From these peaks here, we identified the binding energy and the binding energy can be compared with the binding energy table and then we identify the elements, the type of elements. The chemical environment, XPS also detect, also reveal about the chemical environment, it is very important. This means factors like the neighboring elements like 
whether the oxygen is bonded with the carbon or hydrogen is bonded with the carbon or nitrogen is bonded with the carbon or fluorine is bonded with the carbons. So it also reveal information about this stuff here. So this basically include the neighboring elements, the oxidation state basically of the elements and this bonding basically affects the binding energy of the OJ electron as well as the photo electron pitch. This means that if we look into here the binding energy, so if we change the neighboring atoms here, so the binding energy will change. So when we see the binding energy, so from there we will realize that what kind of elements is there. Similarly, uh, three different titaniums having different oxidation states shows different binding energy. And this kind of variations can be only possible by high resolution XPS spectra. Uh, because uh, if we just look at this peak here in survey spectra, we cannot uh, see any variation in the binding energy. It is very difficult. But for high resolution uh, XPS spectra here, like this one, when we resolve these peaks, then now we can realize that what is this peak exactly located here and it is given here 198.5 uh, electron volt. And what is the difference between these two peaks here and it is also mentioned here 1.6 electron volt. So this minor differences in the binding energy because for example, for titania one kind of binding energy, for uh, titania uh, 2, this is another oxidation state, we have another binding energy and similarly for titanium 3. So this small variation is only possible with the help of high resolution spectra. From survey spectra, we cannot reveal uh, information about this kind of small variation in the binding energy. Because on x-axis, if you look here on the x-axis, it is now possible to exactly tell that what this peak is locating here and what this peak is locating here. So this was all about the high resolution XPS spectra.